Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of Syracuse Sports presented by Kraus Health, the exclusive healthcare partner for SU Athletics. Brent Axe, Emily Liker with you here. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, spring football rolls along. It truly felt like a spring day in central New York today, Emily. We have watched spring practice with a foot of snow on the ground. <laughs> We've watched spring practice on you know, sunny days when it's like in the mid 60s. And today, it's like actually felt like a spring day in central New York. Really felt like spring football. So it was nice to be out there in true spring temperatures watching a spring football practice. Uh, Emily and I are going to put the focus on the linebackers today. We've got some great questions from our Syracuse Sports Insiders, and we're going to hear from linebacker Derek McDonald and new linebackers coach slash co-defensive coordinator Robert Wright coming up as well. But Emily, uh, you pretty much had a Hawkeye on the linebackers the whole time at practice today. What were your big takeaways from keeping an eye on that group? Yeah, I watched them watched them the whole time today while we were outside in that that beautiful weather you mentioned. Um, I mean, first drill, I posted a clip of this, but first drill, they were working out with the running backs, which we see a lot, um, kind of doing this drill where you come out and around the cones and then you're straight into each other, you're going head on head. They were trying to um, force some fumbles, which we did see a couple on our Sparrow, knocked a ball loose. I don't remember who was carrying it at that time, but that drill was just – such a high energy drill. And I mean, that's one of those consistent things that we've been talking about through spring practice is just how high energy is. I mean, like the second they got out of stretches, they were in that drill. They were ready to go. They were yelling at each other, getting into it. Super physical. Um, I, I mentioned on Twitter that drill was probably the closest I've ever come to getting trucked on the sideline <laughs> from like just people coming at you, like head on a swivel on the sideline. And I back held it up and it was, it was all good. But my heart was, my, my heart was beating a little bit. I was like, Oh my God. Look like, out. I'm like, Oh my God. I almost got tackled by some really big dudes right there into a snowbank. But um, so that was really interesting. Um, you know, one of the things I wrote down in my notepad was just, right equals spry like he was very just light on his feet and mm -hmm. like bouncy but still had that intensity it was just kind of like a different different manner of, of intensity like he was still very vocal he was still very hands-on as we've seen kind of with this entire coaching staff but like it had a a lightness to it and maybe that's just because he's also one of the the youngest guys on this already pretty young staff like he's he's on the younger end of that but that was something i wrote down we saw him um correcting some form the next drill they did was kind of just going through and and working on where to hit defensive linemen when they come up on him and so like at one point he said to someone he was like you can't hit a 340 pound guy straight on you are not 340 pounds you got to find your angle and get up in there from the side so that you're moving him out and using your size to your advantage even though he's bigger than you um and then you know just just looking at the group as a whole I think we obviously know Marlo is is the guy that's going to be leading here, and certainly we saw it. he looked good in everything he did today. But, um, you know, Derek McDonald is a guy I think we talked about on the first episode after we had heard from Brown that um, there was some improvement from him, and he certainly looked looked good today as well and was paired with Marlo in a lot of what was going on um, and, and a lot of the drills that we watched with that. But then behind him, I mean, it, it's Anwar Sparrow, who I mentioned had a, had a forced fumble and who has been in and out of the lineup these past couple years and has like split a position on the depth chart with McDonald and also kind of had his own time, but he's also had an injury and just he's just been one of those guys that like you can feel like he has potential, but we just haven't seen a whole lot of him so yeah. far. So That's Anwar Sparrow, right, yeah. And then the fourth guy that was rounding out this group today and I think this will probably change and we could see like a couple different people going through this um but the, the fourth today was Zion Moultrie Goddard who's a redshirt freshman um I believe he's a New York guy who was in that class of 2023 and and he was up there working with those those three um kind of in the order you know you got James Hurd Jr. in there from West Virginia he's that trans he transferred um and then you got some other younger guys in there but those four and then and then James Hurd, I'd say were kind of the standouts of the group. It's interesting. You brought up right, and I posted a clip of this when he was talking about taking on a 340 pound guy. You'll be right here on the sideline if you don't angle correctly. And and the we're we're getting to know these coaches and the new drills that they do and what their emphasis is. And while the defense is 
a base four two five, right? You got to have a, a label on the door. Coach Wright said it. We're going to play a couple of clips from him. Every player I've talked to has said it. Coach Robinson has said it, Emily, that, yeah, we have a scheme, but what's more important is what fits this group, what fits this team. And what this linebacker group is, is a mix of new guys and experience and the different types of linebackers that are there. But to get somebody like Marlo Wax back in that group who can adjust to pretty much anything you throw at him, he's been around for a few years. I don't think it's going to take him a long time to adjust to this. Same thing with Derek McDonald as well. We're going to hear from McDonald coming up. These are both veteran guys that have been around. You know, Hurd is, by all accounts, a great player that's going to fit right into what they're doing here. But it sounds obvious, right? But there are some coaches that are like, no, this is what we do, and this is how you fit it. And I think the last scheme would describe that, right? Tony White had a 3-3-5. And Tony White said, this is the way you're going to fit in this 3-3-5. And we heard about that a lot. And then, of course, when Tony White left and Rocky Long comes in, who literally invented the defense, like there was a clear box they were in. I don't feel that so far with this group. I think they kind of have a philosophy, but there's a lot more. I'm just going to use this word, Emily, looseness in this defense, Mm -hmm. looking at what they have and let's adjust according to that. And I think the players like that. I can tell and talking to a bunch of guys so far, they like that there is flexibility and it's like, let me do what I do best. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, honestly, like I felt like today was one of the days we got some of the most insightful comments into the scheme and, and what this defense is going to be. I know one quote you sent out from coach Wright to, to subscribers in the text chain um, that also like really clicked for me, like especially listening in person, but then also listening back was um, he was like schematically every defense has won a championship and every defense has also gotten blown out. So like, it's, it's not about the scheme. It's about, the intensity you're playing with the scheme and whether your players actually fit that scheme and how well they understand the scheme. Like you can play any. And so that for me, for some reason, like just clicked in a way, I think some of the comments about like, Oh, we're playing to like our player strengths and stuff in a way like that hasn't quite clicked before. Like you said, it's surely going to be a four, two, five um, with four down linemen. And, And so the other thing I thought was, was really telling and kind of, indicative of that was Derek McDonald I know talking with you mentioned that he's playing more off ball now as a linebacker yeah. which um it just that solidifies that like those guys have a pretty different role than they've had in the past few years like Marlo and Derek past couple of years were the guys that had to go downfield and try and get in and get the quarterback just like the D lineman did and that's that's not going to be the case anymore they're going to have completely different roles um versatility was something Coach Wright mentioned a lot, just like getting these guys in all different types of linebacking positions and and roles and modes and stuff. And, you know, maybe there are going to be situations where there's going to be three of them out there. Um, I think most of the time it will be two. But yeah, today, today I felt was really, really eye opening about about the scheme and just understanding. And, you know, like that makes sense. Like the linebackers are the heart of this defense. Like they are right in the thick of it all. They work with the DBs. They work with the D linemen. So, um, yeah. And you'll hear Derek McDonald say this. We've heard a couple other guys say this that we've talked to. When you have a bigger front, you know, Fidel Diggs has come up and some of the transfers that have come in and some players, Hastings and and guys that are just going to be up front on the defensive line. It makes the job of the linebackers easier. And you're going to hear McDonald talk about that coming up here and how they adjust and who's in and out. And we've got a good question from our friend Rock and Ron on this that we'll get to in a moment here. But let's just remind, we've said some names here, right? Remember, Stephon Thompson transferred to Nebraska, speaking of that 3-3-5 and that familiarity back with Coach White. Marlo Wax comes back. It's not just the presence and the leadership, it's production. He had 110 tackles last year. He had 11 tackles, tackles for loss. Four forced fumbles. Like, Emily, this guy easily <laughs> could have been going through the NFL draft process right now. And I felt like would have a good shot. I don't have like the the full linebacker list in front of me about where he he would stand, but I feel like that's a guy that could at the very least catch on in a summer camp if he wanted to. Right. But wanted to be a part of this felt like he could up his production a little bit more, maybe bump up the list on the NFL draft list. James Hurd, 6'2", 230. Uh, Tomorrow guys, we're going to have a New Jersey theme on the pod. We're going to have some fun with that. Camden guy, right? 
Derek McDonald, who we talked about, 67 tackles last year, four tackles for a mm-hmm. loss. Off ball a little bit more, he's changing his role. Somebody that Fran Brown, we played the clip in a previous pod, has been impressed with, right? You mentioned Sparrow, who had 30 tackles last year. Caden Bailey played 11 games last year. He got hurt in the Georgia Tech game, 6'2", 223. There's a guy you mentioned his name who's getting in there. Uh, Jihad Lassane Jr. is a freshman from Newark, 6'4", 234, and how this team is noticeably getting bigger, not only in what they're doing in the weight room, just the type of players that they're bringing in here. So it's interesting to see the mix of of new and young, uh, the bigger guys, what the scheme is. But when you have a base of of Wax and McDonald and Sparrow now mixing in Hurd, there's there's depth there, and I'm I'm curious to how the difference between three three five and four two five, right? Mm-hmm. And as we get to know that and what those roles are going to be, because I think we kind of get to know the three three five, and I, I actually kind of like the three three five defense. I thought it was unique. I thought it was different. It's hard to prepare for. It's almost like the two three zone in a way. It can kind of mess <laughs> with you mentally. Whereas it feels like this defense is just in your face, aggressive, coming after it, beefy up front, speed at the linebacker position, five cornerbacks to make life hell to throw the football. But Coach Wright said it, you know, every scheme has won a championship and and gotten blown out here. So they seem to be putting the emphasis, and the linebackers seem to be key in this, Emily, how you play, getting to the ball, Mm -hmm. physicality, speed. It's it's a lot more of that than just like, here's this scheme that's going to, you know, mess you up a little bit. Right. Yeah. It's just everything, everything we've heard about it outside of the, the, like, it's, it's all about the players stuff and, and the actual like kind of schemes, like the mentality of it is just, like you said, aggressive, get in the backfield. Fidel Diggs said something today along those lines. Yeah. He said, so he said, someone asked like, what's the emphasis that um, coach Robinson puts on kind of physicality and Fidel said he always wants us to play violent up front because that's where the game started up front. We got to always make sure we impact the line of scrimmage. So obviously we were just saying, I mean, the linebackers are going to have a little less of a role in that if they're playing off ball, but there are certainly still going to be instances that they are. Um, and, and, you know, from talking from Derek, he was another one of those guys who said he bulked up and that's again, been the theme, the theme of the week and the first five spring practices that we've viewed now is that, that bulk up and and it's going to help on defense I think a lot just as much as it is on offense yeah let's hear from Derek and then we'll hear from coach Wright who we got the opportunity for the first time to speak with today uh first uh Derek McDonald it's a lot of change we have a lot of less, a lot of stuff to learn but it's been a lot of fun I think the scheme's exciting and all the new pieces we've added have uh have definitely made it a lot of fun to learn so what, what would you say is kind of the biggest adjustment you've had to make um I mean for me I'm just playing more off the ball as a linebacker um, we, I mean, we changed the scheme, so it's a, a different look up front now. But it's not—it's nothing I haven't seen before. It's just more learning the new plays and stuff like that. How would you describe what kind of the philosophy of the scheme that Coach yeah. Robinson's putting in is? I mean, he told us that he just wants it to fit us, fit our personnel when he got here. So he's kind of uh, developing it around that, developing it around what we already had. So it isn't anything too crazy. It's not going to change that much, but. It's going to fit us the best it can and uh, help us go out there and play fast. How big was it for you guys to get Marlo back in the room this year? Oh, yeah, it was definitely huge. Um, Marlo is obviously a great player, and he's someone I've played next to for a couple years now, so it was huge to have him back. Uh, it's We're pretty comfortable playing together, and uh, I think we, we have a good year ahead of us. So here's the difference, Emily. When I was asking those guys two years ago when the three three five came in, what's it like adjusting to it? And especially in spring ball, you'd kind of see their eyes bulk up a little bit. It's like, this is different. Like, this is a whole new thing that I'm learning here. What Derek just said there is like, I like what I'm seeing here. Yeah, it's a new scheme and I'm learning new things, but it's not complicated. Like, they're putting an emphasis on just get to the ball. Just be aggressive. Just be you. How you play the game is more important than the scheme. Big difference there in the comfort level with these guys and kind of what they're absorbing and just kind of getting after it in practice. Right. And I mean, pretty much everyone you talk to, like I've, I've heard this from, from Justin, like last year and Justin this year, and we heard it from Derek and you hear it from Marlo and stuff like that. Like, well, a change in, in scheme, like sounds daunting in theory, like these guys are football players, especially these veterans. They've been playing this game for so long now that like, it's more about, it's more about the specific play calling and more of the minutia 
stuff than it is like overall generally what exactly. the scheme is. Like if, if you were to throw SU starters out there having not heard anything but like one meeting's worth of what the scheme is, like they would be able to play a like decent game, I think. Like that's a good point. It, it's it's not as big of an overhaul as I think we sometimes like imagine it being like, oh, like a change of scheme. That's such a big deal. And and it, and it is, but like for these guys, like they know football and they, they already know and have these things kind of ingrained in them. Let's hear more from Derek McDonald, including on what's kind of been the theme of spring ball, how everybody's getting bigger. Uh, yeah, I definitely put on some weight. I think I probably put on like eight pounds, um, kept the same speed pretty much. It's just, we've been working super hard in the weight room and I mean, I'm even, I'm more hungry, like, from all the work we've been doing. So I always eat a lot, but it's hard for me to gain weight. But I've been really focusing on that. So uh, I've definitely gained a little bit of weight, and I think that's going to help. Is that just an emphasis on being bigger and stronger as a team? Is it injury prevention, a little bit of everything? How would you describe it? Yeah, it's definitely a little bit of everything. I think uh, the new scheme allows us to be a little bit bigger. We don't have to, like, move around quite as much. Um, and then just, I mean, injury prevention is huge. So put on a little bit more muscle or some more protective layers is definitely important to keep us all safe this year. And one more from Derek McDonald here. I asked him of all the new guys that have come in, who is, who has popped? Fadil Diggs, he definitely has been someone I've noticed. He plays in front of me most of the time and he's making my job a little bit easier by what he does on the line of scrimmage. So it, it's been good to have him out there. And I mean, a lot of these new pieces are really exciting. I've seen a lot of them already making plays. So for sure. Marlo Wax said the same thing about some of the guys in front of him making his life easier. It just feels like, Emily, there's there's a sigh of relief from these linebackers in the role that they're playing based on some of the new players that have been brought in and, and put up front. Because remember, there's, there's a lot of transition on the defensive line one way or the other, but uh, these new players seem to be acclimating pretty quickly, especially a guy like Fidel Diggs, who while there are some differences here and coach Robinson mentioned this, he knows coach Robinson and work with them. And mm -hmm. you know, that transition is, is certainly the, the time he has to adjust get gets cut down a little bit. Right. Something I thought was interesting. I listened back to when Marlo spoke the other day, which I missed because I had to run off to lacrosse. Um, and he said like he, in one of his meetings with either Fran or Elijah, I don't remember which one, like he said he wanted big guys brought it in up front because he that changes his role and, and what's going on there. And so I thought that was really interesting. Um, I mean, you like assume they were going to bring in big guys anyway, right? But like to hear that that was something that he wanted as one of the leaders on this team and one of the most productive players on this team and to see that that was followed through on and executed, I it just tells you so much about how this program is being run now. So let's meet Coach Wright. Remember, he comes in from Buffalo, where his defensive unit ranked in the top 25 nationally last year. Pass defense was 18th. Defensive touchdowns, 25th. Third down defense, they were 23rd in the country. Uh, the Bulls were top 10 nationally in total defense during conference play. Devin Grant and uh, Max Michelle led the MAC and respective takeaways. Grant named a first-team All-MAC selection this season. He has coached with Coach Robinson before at Texas A&M, and as Coach Wright said to us today, uh, has worked with people that have worked with Coach Fran and heard nothing but great things about Coach Fran Brown. So, of course, the first question is, why Syracuse? Here's what he yeah, said. So I'd worked with Elijah Robinson uh, at Texas A&M and then spoke with Coach Fran a couple times on the phone uh, leading up to it and uh, have worked with some other people that have worked with Coach Fran and only heard great things, right? Then obviously Syracuse speaks for itself. Uh, you know, a, a good private university, and I was only two hours away, so that made it a little more convenient. Uh, so it seemed like a, a no-brainer for me to, to, to join this staff and, and get this thing going. Coach right here on a little bit more on Fran. His lack of uh, fear of just being completely himself at all times, right, and then absolutely telling everyone the truth. Like, hey, you had a bad practice. Like, you need to get better, right? You can't come out here and do that again. You're wasting your opportunity, right? No fear to tell anyone, right? Whether that's the best player, whether that's the worst player, whoever that is, right? He's completely real 100% of the time. And I've come to appreciate that. Like, not sugarcoating anything, not patting, you know, not like being fake or false love, right? He's just completely honest, completely real at all times. And I think people really feel that, as, you know, when the recruits are here, like, they're not getting this, like, recruiting pitch. They're just getting Coach Fran. Right, the same way that he talks to our players in the team meeting is the same way that he addresses the recruits, right, on a you know an unofficial visit or an official visit. So that's really sticks out to me because in college football, there's there's not a lot of people who are just genuinely themselves when it comes to recruiting, 
um, and it, it shows. He's been, you know, wildly successful, you know, throughout his career and looking forward to continuing that here. You know what, Emily, I find this fascinating. I might have to go back to some old tapes and listen to when Babers took over in 2015 and people were saying the same things because is there a lot of fakeness in college football? I mean, Coach Wright kind of referred to it there because time and time again, what we hear from the new coaches, what we hear from the players, what we hear from the recruits is how real the staff is, particularly Fran Brown. So, like, are these guys used to, like, sniffing out fakes like they're being fed lines and and recruited a certain way it's like you know you go to like a go buy a car and and you just kind of know like the car salesman's just kind of like you know try giving you like what you think you want to hear kind of thing like it's amazing to me how from the top down everybody's like yeah he's real he tells you like it is and they appreciate that and they want that so apparently they're not getting it in other places here i've been fascinated how this has been the theme so far and pretty much everybody we've talked to yeah, you know, I I think it's it's probably a little exaggerated. Um, just like it's gotta how be really a it's compared bit, right? yeah. compared to to other coaches, but I think there is also like some truth to it. Like we know college football is is a sport of egos for for better and mm-hmm. worse at times. Um, and and so, you know what? I I'm sure. I think everyone has a bad coworker in their life, right? <laughs> everyone at some point, whether it's the job you have, like working at a coffee shop in college or like a job you hold for 10 plus years working somewhere like somewhere else like everyone has a bad coworker. everyone has horror stories from work college football is no different so I, I'm sure there are some guys that these people have these coaches have worked with and are, are they seemingly are very glad that Fran is their head guy now well and now you have the portal like when I was talking to James Hurd the other day he flat out said I had a disagreement with my position coach at West right. Virginia and that's part of the mm-hmm. reason why I went in the portal these guys have choices and they have options now and they want to fit where they fit and they they do want it straight what I am encouraged by is you know we hear so much about this younger generation and the participation trophy generation and these kids are coddled and everything it's no, these guys want it straight. They want to know what their role is. They want to know where they fit. This is a big decision for these guys, right? Where they go, where they play. And yes, they have the portal as an option if it doesn't work out. But believe it or not, most of these guys don't want to go in the portal. They want to go somewhere where it fits by all accounts. Education, where they play, of course, NIL money and all that stuff that comes later. So I've just been really intrigued by how people find it refreshing that they're being t- told exactly how it is and, and what it needs to be. And Coach Wright brought that up. Emily, I believe you asked this question about his recruiting philosophy. Let's listen to that. My approach to recruiting is um, just being who I am, right? I am who I am, and it's not necessarily a fit for everybody. Um, but I'm not going to show you a fake me, right, in recruiting so that when you do get here, ultimately, you're like, wait, who is this? Right, so I am who I am, right? I'm a football guy, right? I'm X's and O's, right? I don't have a family, so I'm invested in in the players like 24-7, 365, right? To the point where they're like, dang, coach, like, give me a second. Like, <laughs> um, it's Thursday night, why are you calling me? Um, but um, just being myself, um, not a rah-rah necessarily type of guy. It's just like, I'm going to get you better at football. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to develop you. Um, I've got a, a track record of taking guys and, and helping them succeed and become the best version of themselves. You know what's interesting about him too, Emily, is he told us today, Coach Wright, he doesn't have a family. He's just a single guy coaching football. Like, this is his life. He dedicates pretty much everything he has to it. Right. I know that line when he dropped that kind of startled me because, like, he was just like, I don't have a family and, like, kept rolling through it. And at first I was like, oh, because, like, usually, like, you hear these guys being like, I have a family like but I this is my this is my sacrifice and they understand and stuff like this and so yeah it's it's a different it's a different situation for him and like you heard us all laugh about um he said that he sometimes calls his linebackers late at night and tries to talk football and they're like coach I'm 21 years old I have a life (laughs) (laughs) so that was a nice moment Let's go to some questions from our Syracuse Sports Insiders, and we would love for you to join the group today. We're getting bigger and better here. We've had so many new subscribers come in during spring practice, and football is there. It's a focus. You can ask uh, questions for this podcast. You can text me directly about football, but don't forget lacrosse is going on. 
basketball, what's going on in the transfer portal and the latest there. It's all there for our Syracuse Sports Insiders. And to become a Syracuse Sports Insider today, just text the word ORANGE to 315-847-3895. The cool thing is you can try it for two weeks, see what we're bringing to you, see the questions that we're answering for you. And then after a two-week free trial, it's just $3.99 a month after that. From the legend Rock and Ron, so he says, in a 4-2-5, the starting linebackers seem obvious. Wax and McDonald. Who do you see first two off the bench? And he throws some names at us. Hurd, Sparrow, Bailey, Rune, Amaparelia. He thinks it's Hurd and Bailey. Now, could Hurd get that starting job, right? Like, I, I feel like Wax and McDonald certainly are in the lead at this point, and we haven't seen a depth chart yet, Emily, but... Hurt's been pretty impressive, and I think he could be knocking on that door. Yeah, you know, after practice today, I I think I would be very shocked, I think, if it wasn't Wax and McDonald is one and two. Um, yes, Hurt is good, but he's also young. He's not, like he just doesn't have the experience Fair. or the game experience as as these other guys do. Um as as far as that second, one note is Austin Rune was one of those guys that was not on the spring roster that we found out last year. Oh, right. Week. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so he's he's not around anymore. He had been on the depth chart last year, so he might have been um competing for that role. I would say again, just based off on a uh, watch in about 20 minutes of them today or closer to 15, um, and it just being drill work. I think it's probably like Sparrow heard and then I think Sparrow's probably a pretty solid second to one of those guys, either Wax or McDonald. And then it's going to be Hurd and and those younger guys competing. And I think Hurd has the leg up, um, one, just by being a guy that this new coaching staff brought in purposefully, which means they want him here and, and they see potential in him. Um, but yeah, you know, it'll be, it'll be interesting to watch progress through the spring. We'll get, obviously a little bit of a glimpse at like what depth looks like during the spring game, but Wax and McDonald, I think you can lock in pretty solidly. It, it would take something, I think, huge to force either of those guys out of their starting spots. From TK, who asks, unlike when they adapted to the three three five, is their current body of work have more of a familiar feel to it than the prior defensive scheme change a few years ago, both for defensive backs, linebackers, and defensive linemen. Yeah, we kind of mentioned that earlier, for sure. There's a familiarity. There's a comfort. You, you don't see these guys overwhelmed. And I have to say, like, they adjusted pretty quickly to Tony White's three three five. Like, the production jumped, and I think people were really impressed right. by that defense. But to answer your question, TK, I don't think there's any question about it. Just what we heard from Derek McDonald moment, a few moments ago, I should say, and just in the defensive players we're talking to and the emphasis from Coach Wright and what he said about how we're playing and being able to focus on that as opposed to this is where this scheme fits, I don't think there's any question about that. He adds this question, Emily. What specifically is fueling player enthusiasm beyond Coach Brown's general approach to getting the team together? What do you think about that? My 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 gut reaction to the question is how hands-on he is. I mean, that's like one thing we've heard, especially from the defense, right? Because he's a defensive-minded guy. Um, we're coming from Dino being an offensive-minded guy and an offensive-focused coach. So like guys like Justin Barron and Marlowe aren't used to having their head coach up in their business during practice and, and working <laughs> with them and adjusting things. So that's that's certainly big the been the big thing, I think, is just how involved he is with practice, with the planning of what these guys need to do for their bodies to develop. That's like another big thing we've heard about is these like individualized plans that Brown and the rest of the staff um, are making for these guys. And, and that's helped lead to the bulk up that we've been talking about. So I think, I think that's probably the big thing for me that we we've heard the most about that and the energy. Um, but, but who isn't excited by some energy <laughs> in football practice? I'll add this from Jaden Bellamy. I don't have the audio here, but I have the quote. I had a chance to talk to him today, and he said this, quote, I always liked Fran's personality. I just didn't want to go to Rutgers. It just wasn't the right fit for me. But now that he's here, I feel like I'm being coached very hard, and he's just changing the program. It feels just like Notre Dame, to be honest with you. So remember, Bellamy, New Jersey kid. Fran was at Rutgers, tried to get him to go there. He ends up at Notre Dame, comes back here last year and then reunites with Fran one way or the other. And that backs up what you said, Emily, about like, yeah, 
your coach is right in your position group. Dino right. always had an affinity for the wide receivers. You know, mm -hmm. he's done a number of things in his career, but there's always like one position you kind of, that's like your baby. And Fran is not that he hasn't gone to other parts of the defense, but he is in there with those defensive backs. And th there's a real benefit to that. John W uh, asked this, the last several years, Syracuse has been beaten in the speed aspect of the game, particularly with respect to the better teams in the ACC. What is the coaching staff doing to improve this? Well, I think they're fighting fire with fire, Emily. I think it's the players yeah. they're going after. The transfer, Zed Haynes in particular, we've heard a lot at the wide receiver position in terms of speed. Some of the recruits we've seen coming in, like a new thing is the 100-meter times that we see and how that translates. It's going to bring this up. Right. It, it used to be the 40. Now it feels like the 100 meter times are the big ones and how many of these guys run track in the spring to work on their speed. We've seen that be an emphasis in recruiting and a couple of the transfers that they brought in. So I think, John, to answer your question, it's just they're bringing in faster players and, and putting an emphasis on that. Right. I was, I've been reporting and, and talking to some people tied to all the commits that we saw come in over the weekend. And I was talking to a coach right before we got on this call um, and, and he said that Fran's coaching staff found this player because someone saw him at his track meet and then called the football team and was like, hey, is this kid on your football team? What type of football player is he? So, yes, I think you're spot on, Brent. They are they are seeking out speed, like guys who are already fast and going there and then seeing what they have to develop from the football side of things, because you can teach football, you can't teach speed right like you can maybe get a little faster by training i know like um obviously some of the guys have talked about like by sleeking out their bodies and and putting on losing body fat but putting on muscle like that can change your speed a little bit but if you're not a fast guy like you're never going to be a super fast guy like you just might get faster uh if that makes sense yeah Derek mcdonald said that one of those clips that we played he's put on eight pounds but hasn't lost speed and I think that's something that the when we talked to the training staff at one of the first practices, they said that like we we have to bulk up, but we can't lose speed, right? It's there's an interesting balance there and how much weight you put on, losing your body fat, but don't lose speed. This is a team that has to fight fire with fire in that aspect. And a very good question there from John. All right, Emily, tomorrow, and we're recording this on Wednesday, so our Thursday podcast, we're gonna have a little fun because we've heard so much about Jersey. We're going to put the emphasis on some New Jersey guys, the New Jersey bond. What is it with these guys from Jersey, their favorite things about Jersey? And you and I are going to have a fun little list as well about our favorite things from New Jersey. If you're watching on YouTube, you can probably guess what one of mine's going to be. <laughs> right on the shelf there. That will certainly make the list in one way, shape, or form. So we'll head for the swamps of Jersey in our next edition of Syracuse sports and, and why that's been such an emphasis of this football team, right up to, to the head coach and the defensive coordinator and, and not only New Jersey, but Camden, New Jersey, but what is it about the garden state and Syracuse football and the revival there? So we'll have some fun with that on our next edition of Syracuse sports. We thank you for subscribing on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, to all of our great Syracuse Sports Insiders as well. Your great feedback and questions for the pod as well. Until then, for Emily Liker, I'm Brent Axe. This has been Syracuse Sports, presented by Krause Health, the official healthcare partner for SU Athletics.